Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 17. We're in chapter 4, starting part uh, 4, which is section 2. So last time we determined uh, if we were, we talked about how to determine if R is statistically significant or not. We also talked about the fact that correlation does not mean causation. In other words, correlation doesn't prove cause and effect. One of the reasons for that is lurking variables. Okay, so in this section we're talking about linear regression and we're going to talk about least squares, criterion, how to plot the least squares line, calculate and interpret the slopes and the intercepts, and interpret the uh, least squares regression line. So those are our objectives which are basically the same. So let's get started. So key points here. The first one is, uh, how do we know when it makes sense to do linear regression? Because we use linear regression to make predictions. So the answer is, if R is statistically significant, then it makes sense to do linear regression. Otherwise, it does not. Because if it's not statistically significant, anything we do will not be... Uh, will not be uh, statistically significant or explain really anything because we failed to show that there's a relationship. So what can we do with linear regression? We can determine the equation of the line that explains the relationship between x and y, assuming again that it's significant. We can predict the value of y. Now here we have to worry about um, the range of x so let's say x goes between, um, say, 10 and x equals 20 in our sample. Then the only values of uh, y that we could predict are for values of x that fall between 10 and 20 in this case. If we get outside of that, we may not know the right prediction because the equation of the line could change outside of that range because we don't have any data. Okay. So how do we find the best fitting equation for the data? This is called a least squares criterion. Criterion is the single uh, form for criteria, which of course is plural, meaning more than one. So what we do is we minimize the sum of the squares of the vertical distance. This is also called the sum of squared errors or the sum of squared residuals. And it's we take all of the data points and we take their distance from this line and we minimize it. So we won't talk about how to do that because you have to use calculus and that's not required for this course. But what do I mean by these vertical distances? Well the pink points here are the points, our data. And the line, the blue line, is what we fit using least squares. And what we want to do is these d's, the distance uh, between these points in the line, we want to minimize the square of those. So we square them, add them up, and then make that sum as small as possible. Okay. So again, we can't talk about how to do that because we don't have the math to do that for this course. So these values of d are also called a residual. Now, to understand this, you have to realize that uh, our, remember that our uh, regression equation is written as y hat equals a plus bx. That's our regression line. And so the estimated value of y is y hat, and the actual values of y are y. So the difference, this, this distance d, is equal to y minus y hat for a certain value of x. And uh, so I've talked about this. And then we can give the equation for the residual as y minus y hat for a point. You definitely want that on your formula sheet. So the least squares uh, equation is given by y hat equals a plus bx. a is the intercept. The intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. This would be a. And then b is the slope of the line. This is similar to y equals mx plus b, but of course we've mixed it up. So it's not exactly like that, but here uh, m becomes b and b becomes a. So it's a little confusing, but um, and this is supposed to be a straight line. 
but I can't draw a straight line easy on this auto tag. Okay, so how do we calculate A and B? Well, um, B is using this formula. The numerator here is from the numerator of the correlation coefficient, and this denominator is from the numerator of our sample variance, S squared. So we can use this, if we don't have the standard deviations of x, the, the x values and the y's values, we can use this formula for b that we've got here. And if we do have the standard deviations and the correlation coefficient, we can use this equation. The caution is um, we don't have to worry so much about rounding here until the end, but here we have to keep all the decimal places for s sub y and s sub x and r, or else we get an error you know, rounding error. And then we calculate A using y bar minus B times X. I want to want you to know that the point X bar, Y bar is always on the regression line. Always. Okay? So if you plug in X bar for the value of X in this equation, you're going to get Y bar. And there's a figure 411 in our book that you can look at for that. Now how do we interpret the slope? So the slope tells us, first, how fast the values in y change when x changes. And we're going to make this interpretation standard, so we're going to use this following sentence. Before I go over that, I want to talk about the slope. The slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. You may have seen delta y over delta x. You may not have, but um, that is how we measure the slope. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make this easy for ourselves, so we're going to use one unit of x in the denominator here. That means we're dividing by one. That means in the numerator we can keep the value of b. We don't have to do anything special to it or change its units. So the slope is b over one unit change of x, and we're going to say that x increases. So here's our sentence here that you'll always use, so please write this down. Um, for every increase, it's always an increase, in x of one unit, whatever the units are, you put it here. y will either increase or decrease. If b is positive, then y increases. If b is negative, then y decreases. Okay? So if b is positive, we'd say increases by... And then we put B, and then we put the units that are Y, and here's very important uh, two words, and that's on average. This is on average this occurs. Okay. Now, let's talk about the inter interpretation of the intercept. Before we interpret the intercept, we need to know here when not to do this. Well, for this class... I'm only going to look, make you look at this. Do I have any values of x in my data that are at or near 0? If not, I don't interpret the intercept. The other thing is, it, it doesn't make any practical sense uh, for x to be 0, then we wouldn't do that either. But I find that students actually have quite a difficult time determining this, so we're not going to get into that in this class. I don't want to muddy everything up over something that's... Uh, you know, we, we really don't need to look at it at this point. So here's our equation up here. On average, again, that's very important. When x is 0, the value of y is, and we put in the value of a, whatever that is here, and then we put in the units that x, uh, y is in. Okay. An influential point is a point, uh, you know, xy point, that is influential. And... This, we determine this if removing this point will substantially change the intercept or the slope of the regression line, or both. These are points that are usually near the lower values of x. Let's say we have this. It could be way down here, or it could be way up here, or, um, so it's going to be far away from the line. It could be something like this, or, or this point could be way up, whoops could be way up here. Okay, sorry about the zoom there. Prediction. We're only allowed to predict the values of y using the values of x that are in the range of the data of our sample. This is called interpolation, and interpolation is okay. 
We're not allowed to predict values of y using values of x that are outside of the x values in our sample. This is called extrapolation, and that's bad. The reason for that is that it may be that our, our real shape is something like this, and if we take the data here, we see only that part, but as soon as we go outside here, it changes pretty significantly. Okay, so I know I've talked a lot about these concepts, so let's start talking about an example so that it makes more sense. So we're going to use this example from the book talking about the population of wolves in Denali National Park in Alaska. And it says that those that population is dependent upon how big the caribou population is. And it says caribou are mostly found in large herds. And we want to know if we can use the population of caribou to predict the wolf population size. So we're going to let X be the uh, fall caribou population in hundreds. So there's going to be a lot more caribou than there are, there are wolves. And Y is um, the random variable for the late winter wolf population. So here's the data, X's and Y's. And the first thing we need to do is calculate the correlation coefficient and determine if it's significant or not. So I've put the plot of the data over here so you can see this. And we do see a general upward trend. And it looks like a straight line could fit this. It doesn't look curved or any other shape that, that makes better sense. So um, we can do that. Now remember that we need x times y, x squared, and y squared. I'll let you do that to save time here. And then we want to sum them up or total them over here. And so I've given us the totals here. I've also written down uh, S sub x, that's the standard deviation of the x values, and S sub y, the standard deviation of the y values, the means of both x's and y's, and I haven't rounded any of the decimal places in case we want to use them, and there are seven pairs of data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Okay. We write out our formula. Remember, when we're calculating something, the very first step is write the formula, right? formula and then plug in and so that's what I've done here and I've calculated this out and got this lovely number and I round to three decimal places unless somebody tells me to do otherwise and that's 915 okay so we will pick up with this example in the next video so please remember to scan your lecture notes uh, before midnight on the due date that, that's the date that this uh, lecture is listed in the course calendar make the notes neat for you. These are your notes. Update your formula sheet with the formulas we talked about today, and we will see you next time.